Live and unscripted from the DC metro area, this is a story of surviving and thriving after a layoff. This outdoor podcast is brought to you by atopcareer.com. Episode 14. Edith takes a practical look at the job search. She discusses how a career inventory, complete with a list of accomplishments, can not only be validating, but efficient and productive in writing your resume, networking, and interviewing. In this episode, I want to take a little more practical look at the job search. I want to stress to my listeners that I firmly believe that you should not begin job searching until you are in an emotionally, physically, and mentally stable frame of mind. We don't make our best decisions when we're panicked, angry, frustrated, or desperate, or depressed. So again, when you're in an emotionally stable frame of mind, you'll not only make your best decisions, but you'll come across as credible and likable to your audience. And that's when you'll be offered a position. So a few episodes back, I mentioned that one thing that you can begin to do when you're waiting to get to that sweet spot where you are feeling pretty good and pretty stable, one thing that you can do is that you can start to make a list of target organizations. So hopefully at this point you have that list, or at least you have an idea of the employers who can hire or recommend you and a list of people uh, that you want to connect with. Now, at this point, I'm going to assume that you already have a career target. So you know what it is that you want to do, and you at least have a pretty good idea of the employers and the people who you're targeting. So what's the next step? The next step is to make a list of accomplishments that are related to your audience and that your audience, meaning the organizations and people who you're targeting, can relate to. So one thing I recommend for many of the clients I work with is what I call a career inventory. And this takes a lot of time to complete, but believe me, it is worth it to do this. And what that means is to make a list of every position that you've had throughout your professional life. And by every position, I mean full-time, part-time, volunteer, your education, your experience as a student, any role that you have had, and put it into a list format, making note of the dates and the name of the organization and the place of the organization where you were. So it'll be like a spreadsheet. In addition go through each one and make note of the greatest accomplishments associated with each of these positions. This will start to get you into the habit of articulating your accomplishments and remembering them. And often it's like an aha moment when you go through this, like, oh yeah, I remember that position. You know, 10 years ago when I was volunteering at wherever, I did this great thing. You know, and that in itself is um, really validating to remember these types of accomplishments. The other thing that's really helpful about articulating your accomplishments is that you'll have at the end of this process a nice document that you can go back and pick and choose the accomplishments that you want to incorporate onto your resume. So not only is it validating, but it also is going to be much more efficient and productive for your job search. And the third benefit there is that if you are not certain of what you want your next career move to be. And you may be in that frame of mind now too, which is, I wanna stress this, it's perfectly okay to not know what you wanna do next. Our society is kind of meant to pigeonhole us into certain career paths and you know, by the time you're a mid-career person in your 30s or your 40s, you're already supposed to know uh, what you wanna be when you grow up. But the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of people who are still trying to decide that and they need some clarity. And this career inventory should help with that. It should help build some clarity around that. The other thing that's really helpful to do at this stage as part of the career inventory is to have some space for your likes and your dislikes with each of those positions. And I really think it's helpful for people to actually write these things down, to take the time to write them down. 
So that volunteer position that you had 10 years ago, what did you really enjoy about that? What did you dislike about it? And then what's the greatest accomplishment with that position? Going through, taking the time to do this um, really should help build confidence, clarity, and later on make for a more efficient and productive job search. When you do get around to actually writing your resume, this is a mistake that a lot of people make about resumes in today's world, is that they are not meant to be a list of every position that you've ever had throughout your professional career. But having this list of positions can help you pick and choose which ones you want to include in your resume, and that is up to you. You choose what goes on your resume. It'll also help with a job application because, let's face it, with job applications, it's much more cut and dry. You have to include this, you have to include that, you have to include dates, you have to include position, title, etc., etc., job duties. So that's much more straightforward. But with a resume, it's really a different story. So it's important to have both of these ready and available for when you do start to put together a document for your job search. Find Edith online at www.topcareer.com. Thanks for listening.